All right, so we've gotten this far. It's already changed a lot from my original inspiration, but I still have that guiding layer there. And I think the whiskers are going to be helpful. So how can I do something like these whiskers, which appear simple, but they're actually rounded rectangles that are curved. And that's because there used to be a rounded rectangle tool. It was very helpful in Photoshop. But let's see how we can get something similar to it. It's not going to be a long oval, right? So instead, I'm going to start with a rectangle, which is the first time I've made a rectangle in this assignment. And then to match the color, I'll turn on my background. Here, let me put my, my rectangle up above. It's always going to create the shape above the last layer you made or that you selected. And I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to just steal that color directly. You can use my guideline to see kind of where it starts and stops. Use the move tool, put it in. Whoops. That's why I like to lock my, my uh, guide layer so it doesn't select it and move it. All right, so now to transform it, how can I get that curve, not just of the whole thing, but also at the edges? Well, warp is a good start. I can do a curve at the top, right? And then try to match that at the bottom. And then how can I curve the sides, the corners? I can just tug in those anchor points a little bit just to round them. Does not need to be perfect. And because they're vectors, you can always go back and refine them. You can do as many transformations as you want. So that kind of works. You can see where the anchor points are. It's not as clean as a full curve, but it can work. And then I can transform again because it's a little thick. So edit, free transform. And this time I'm going to hold down shift and I'm just going to squeeze it. And now I have a nice little whisker that I can place. And maybe I want to shorten it. There we go. And then if I want to duplicate it, what do I use to duplicate? Command J. Move it down. Edit free transform going to let it grow bigger, rotate it, and then I'm going to squish it again. Holding down shift. That's going to change all the curves a little bit. That's okay. Okay, now this is this is kind of fun. So, I've made those two whiskers. If I want to match those two on the other side, Instead of having to bring them both over, what I can do is select them both and create a group. I just need PhotoP to keep up with me. So I have these two different shapes. If I hold down Shift and select both of them, then I can duplicate both of them. Command J gives me a copy should give me a copy of both. And it did, I want to say. Yep. So here we have shape 9, shape 9 copy, then shape 9 copy 2, and shape 9 copy 3. To make it a little bit easier to see, I'm going to click on this little folder icon that's next to the new layer icon. And that's going to group those copies into this folder. I can also group these two into a folder. So they can be turned off and on. Okay, now I'm going to take the, the batch of copies and I'm going to transform them together. Right click, flip them horizontally, hold down shift, move them over, shows me the center, gives me some idea of where to place them symmetrically, if that's something I'm interested in. And I can use guides, for instance, 
show the side of the ear and how much the whiskers go beyond it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, next, I'm going to work on the, the mouth, the cat's face. Now, my cat has a white muzzle. So what can I do? Well, I can take this, this eye band, duplicate that, and flip it. And this time, I'm going to transform it, right? And instead of flipping it horizontally, I'm going to flip it vertically. So what's up is down, and what, what is down is up. And shift it kind of like that. I can play with warping it. Maybe tilt it on the sides. I like that. And that guide in the center is helpful. And then I might decide, based on that, I want to warp the eye shape a little bit. Make that a little bit more distinct. And then maybe I decide to warp this again. So you can go back and forth to these. And each time, you are not... Um, having to build new pixels. You're just moving these anchor points for the vector, which makes it so no matter what you end with, and no matter how much you mess with it, it's always going to be clean. The only danger is when you tend to start over warping things. Then they just become more complicated shapes than they need to be. Okay, now I'm going to add... I'll do it as a rectangle. I don't use a lot of rectangles. My cat has a white band that goes from his nose all the way between his eyes. So I'm going to use free transform first to place it, get it centered, grow it above that nose. you know, pretty centered, and then warp it to be a little more organic. Again, you can use those guides to kind of help make it match side to side. And what I'm using now are what are called the Bezier handles on this vector. Shift down these anchor points to kind of line up with my pre-existing shape. So with a little practice with warp, you can do pretty complicated shapes without too much effort. So that's starting to look more and more like my cat. Keep making little adjustments. But it doesn't help to be perfectionist about things. You just pay attention, like you do in all things, to what interests you. And you take it from there. I think I want to have it slope a little bit differently. I can see if I like that more or less. Yeah, not working. And if you're not sure about changing it, you can always make a duplicate and make changes to the duplicate. You can also use other tools besides just warp 
So here I'm going to use distort, which will keep my bottom a little bit less affected while I play with warping the top or just moving the corners in from the top, still keeping it centered. So if I want to narrow the nose, distort lets me do that. And then I can see if I like it better or not from what I had before. Yeah. And all these shapes can be turned on and off. So can the guides with command. Um, semicolon. Okay, then my cat has a little white jaw underneath the muzzle. So I'm going to duplicate the pink nose, free transform it, flip it horizontal. No, sorry, flip it vertical, like so. And then hold down Option while I scale it. Option and shift so it grows from the, the center since I have it centered. Then I have to pick a color and this time I'm going to pick kind of a grayish white. So even on a white background it's a little visible without it without an outline. Let's see. There's the split under the nose, and he has a little black dot on his pink nose, so I'll do that. I think I'm pretty close. Again, you don't need to overdo these emojis, at least for the first requirements. So maybe I'll do an ellipse there, and then I'll duplicate it, Command-J, and then move that same ellipse. I don't need to flip it horizontally because it's already a symmetrical shape. And then I can do another ellipse for the black dot because it's very small. And by putting those that white ellipse there, When I do the black dot, move it up on top. One shortcut for moving your, instead of cl clicking and dragging, for moving your layers up through is command right bracket will move your layer up, command left bracket will move your layer down. And it seems kind of random, like why the brackets? But it's because they're so close to the, the command plus and command minus that we often use for zooming in and out. So I'll move it right there. And he only has that little dot of black on one side. So now something I like from the monkey is this little tuft of hair at the top. That's kind of a complicated shape. Let's see if I can get that. So I'm going to use the parametric shape, the same one I used for the ears, and I'm going to do three sides. So it's a triangle. Right? Put the triangle in. I'm going to pick a color. I guess I'll use black. And then I'll transform it. First I'll just do free transform, and I'll hold down shift, and I'll stretch it. Kind of put it off to a little bit off center. Now I'm going to use warp. I'm going to turn it into that kind of cowlick shape, bend it over. That's quite a bit of warping, but let's see how, how it works. So right click. First, I can maybe distort it, which is basically like italicizing it, leaning it, and then right click and then warp, and that might make it a little bit easier to bulge it on one side 
and to bend it down like so.